I'm going to put this on right now so that we'll be recording. And um, I'm going to get us started. So hi, Lisa, it's Janet, and I'm here with Chella Diaz. Am I saying it right? Diaz? Yep. Chella Diaz. And I'm, I love her, so I'm so excited that she's here. Every time I see her, I just, I'm telling you, and you're going to see this when you're editing, but she has this aura about her that just like vibrates every time I talk to her and I see it moving. It's like crazy, but you see if you can see it when you're editing for YouTube. Okay, I'm going to get us started. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I am so excited to introduce you guys to Chella Diaz. Chella knew at a young age how to manage money. At nine years, years old, she would go to the farmer's market and knew the vendors and had the best produce at the lowest prices. She purchased her car at 17 and her first home at 23. Chella was married for 17 years and has two beautiful sons. For over 15 years, Chella has been on a spiritual journey. She has been a holistic or has been hosting holistic workshops to empower people to master their money skills. Her simple approach is creating a spending plan that will serve you today and for many years to come will allow you to reach your financial goals and enjoy grace. Shella has, Chella has worked with, I'm like so tongue-tied because I'm really nervous. I'm just going to say it while I'm introducing her. She's a mentor of mine. I absolutely adore this one. So I'm so nervous. So I'm like a celebrity's on the podcast, but I'm just going to jump right to it, Chella, because honestly, I already messed up your intro because I'm just so excited to have you. But thank you so much for being on the show today. It is a pleasure to be here and listen, things happen for a reason. I'm just delighted that our timing is right and I'm just happy to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. And one of the things we do on Oh My Health There Is Hope is share a story of hope. And you're so inspiring to me. I was just, you guys won't hear this, but I was just talking to the producers before the show, talking about every time I've met with Chella, I could see this um, aura just vibrating out of her. And by the way, I'm not a person who sees auras, but it's just so prominent that you can't like not see it. <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you share your story of hope with us today. It is awesome. Listen, I, I do get that a lot, um, especially people, total strangers on the street, and they just, they can see it, you know, and, and it, I'm, I'm grateful. I am truly, truly grateful, and I'm just delighted to be here. Well, we're so delighted to have you. So do you mind today just sharing your story of hope with everyone? Because I know somebody out there is going to touch, they're going to relate to it. And what we try to do here is create that incredible ripple effect down into the world that creates change. I'm going to tag on your, uh, the bio, right? So I've been good with money. Money just made sense to me, right? But it was not until I got married that I found out that other people view money differently. And then, so I achieved financial success pretty early on, right? So money is just money for me. And then after the divorce, and then after a company that I was working for closed down, I knew that I didn't want, that was something bigger for me out there. And I've always known that I had gifts. So I went on my spiritual journey. I wanted to find what is that. And that's when I actually, I lost all my money. And I had two properties and I had to let them go. One of them was for sale, but you know, at the end of the day, I ended up with nothing. And at the time I knew, I knew there was a reason, but for me, and this is what I, what I do now, is showing women how they, it's okay for them to be, share their gifts and charge money. So if I had not lost all that, I got to tell you, I would not be here today. Meaning I would not be doing this today. I would be here on earth, but I would not be doing this today because I was able to learn that I can do and achieve financial success once but now I can know, I also was able to do it doing something that I love, right? So for those folks out there that are thinking, I cannot make a living with my gifts, I am living proof that that's not the case. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and I'm not going to say that it was a piece of cake all the way. No, there was lots of lessons. There was lots of coaches I worked with. There was a lot of mentors, but it's about the journey. And I know you've heard that before, but it's about what we get to learn. And this is why 
So for me is, you know, achieving that, and let's be honest, when you're able to do that at a very young age, you're a little bit, you know, snobbish because you did it, right? But doing it and then losing it, the humbleness and the way I'm able to do workshops now from such a different place. Because the second time around, I, I made it more difficult. You know, I, I chose to make it a little bit more difficult than the first time because I was fighting it. But there is hope that you can do what you love and you can make a living with it. You just I, have to find a way. I think this is the perfect time for this talk right now because who isn't thinking, I'm gonna have to completely reinvent myself. The world changed overnight. What was available to me is not quite available to me now in my current career. What would you say to people like that who are just starting over? Absolutely. I say, what is that one thing that you can spend hours doing? You're not getting paid for it now, but what is that thing that you're doing, right? And go out and see who's ready to pay you. Get three to five people, right? It's a social media, it's a copywriting, whatever. What can you teach, right? I, I've seen people with, that are, love music. So it's not just about, but what is that skill that you have that in back of the mind, you've been thinking, yeah, well, someday, some, you know, but some, that someday is now. This is your opportunity. And all you need is three to five people, test it out. See what needs to be changed. See needs to, what needs to be adjusted. And you have to charge. I don't care if it's minimal fee, but you have to charge because we have got to have that energy exchange. Because people do not value something that's given to them for free. So test it out, get three to five people, test it out. And then after those five people, one, you learn a lot. But then you're going to be able to go out and increase the price after that. I love that. I think that that is an incredible piece of advice to give to people. As a mindset coach, I feel like you're, that's why she's telling you to grab what you love doing, what you're passionate about. And you think, I'm never going to be able to make money at this. That's where the mindset changes, right? As you come in and you get those three to five people and they can be close friends if you want. So they're giving you really true advice and you're not being like, well, what are you talking about? And you don't get defensive. You just receive it in a totally different way. But what do you think as far as mindset, how much a mindset is really involved in being successful? Oh my God. I huge, right? Because we all have that monkey chatter, right? So a mindset coach is going to help you quiet down those monkeys. And once you quiet down the monkeys, then you're able to, because we all put up our own barriers. We are our worst enemy. And the mindset coach is going to help you. They're going to see the bigger picture and they're going to help you identify and help you shift that so that you're able to do the things you need to do, whether it's making those phone calls, showing up to those networking events, Whatever you need to do to grow your business or to even get your business started, mindset coach, crucial. So a couple of the things, so let's just say, cause you, again, I said at the beginning of the show and I really meant it, she's a mentor of mine. I think she's phenomenal. And I like kind of stalk her when I'm looking for, you know, advice or, or information because she's that incredible. So if I came to you and I'm like, okay, oh my gosh, Chella, I, I lost my job. I'm laid off. I don't even know when I'm going to be able to go back. And I'm a chef and I love to cook, but I like vegan food. And I don't know if I can make money at that because it's saturated. How do I do that? Where would I even start? What were some tips that you would give someone starting something new? Oh my goodness, that is such a perfect one because we need you vegan. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A chef is a chef, right? But there's so many different places. Just know that yes, there may be 150, whatever, 150,000 other chefs out there, but nobody has your skill set and nobody can approach things the way you can. If Jenna and I were the same mindset coach, right? She's going to appeal to a certain audience. I'm going to appeal to a different audience. Just because you're doing the same thing, that does not mean that we're competing for the same client. Separate yourself from the crowd. What do you do differently than anybody else? And first we start with, we don't compare ourselves. 
because you have your own unique talents and that's how you're going to attract the people that are ready to work with you. 100%. What is that? 100%. That's why I tell people your story is your, your like super attractor because you will connect and attract those people looking for you. And um, just because, by the way, I use that story because it just recently came to me that somebody was a pretty big chef and they've not been able to work because they've closed down the restaurant and they don't even know if they're going to have a job to go back to. And they're like, what can I do on my own? So this never happens again. But I'm like, you could be making recipes. You could be telling your story with your recipes and make things that are easy for us because we're all stuck at home. And so I, I think I'm going to connect them with you because I think you'd be a perfect coach, but I know you use a lot of intuitiveness when you're coaching. How does that play into someone who's helping you as a mindset coach, helping you with finances? How does intuitiveness like kick in? Intuitiveness to, for me, um, it helps me identify what those money baggage a person has. And we all have it folks. Listen, I'm still a work in progress and from time to time it still sneaks up, right? So it allows me to see I have over 15 certifications, but I also have some pretty magical, powerful gifts that were given to me that I've had since I was eight years old, which I, by the way, I shut off because I didn't want to be that weird kid. You know what I mean? I didn't want to be the one that stands out, you know? So, but we all have a, a way of making that happen. And the chef is a perfect, a perfect example. But even if, let's say for her, she loves what she does, but there was something else that she wanted to do. Now will be the time to explore that. But you, you were so right on it, right? She could do meal plans. She could help us shop, right? Because some people find that incredibly overwhelming, right? Where can we shop? What should we get? What should we have in our pantries, right? And initially, what if she put together, we're creating a business plan for you right here. <laughs> What if she initially started doing a monthly subscription so that she could, she could give us, you know, maybe twice a month, she could give us some tips. And she's just answering the questions that people are asking, right? Make it easy for us so that we can give you the $29 or the $49. You know, initially we're gonna start out, just imagine if you had a hundred people paying you $45. You know, you, you would, you know what I mean? So we, we, we sometimes even $27, $29, start where you are and just build up your clientele. Have, okay, here it's coming in. So have the first 25 people be your founding members. And for them, you're only going to charge them $29. That's all you need is your 20, 25 people, maybe 20, charge them $29. And that's your base. And everybody wants to be a founding member. I want to be a founding member, right? <laughs> and you start your subscription. And that's the first step. So whether it's that, whether it is music teacher, it doesn't matter. This is the time for us to find that skill set and find a way to attract the money to us. I love that you said you don't want to ever stand out, but there is no way you could not stand out. And saying that, like people are now moving on to social media, right? Before it was big, I thought it was really saturated before, but since COVID hit, everybody understands the importance of being able to reach out and touch people globally or, you know, just around the state or wherever your, you know, your target market is. And they're all coming there. They're flooding there. What are some tips that they could be doing to stand out, to be different, to really be seen and build that business? Because I know you use social media a lot. Yeah, show up as yourself. This, for the last couple of weeks, for the last couple of months, I've been showing up at least once a week. Now I'm upping it to three times a week. I show up and I answer questions. So find out what your audience wants and start building that, right? You show up. You show up as yourself and you give tips, right? So I do work a lot with money, but one of my things is that I show people how they can meal prep. Now, I don't do anything fancy, you know, it's just meal prep. And meal prep is for me, you prepare in advance. You take advantage of what's on sale. So I do it more from a mind, from the money perspective than I do from the actual cooking perspective. Um, but that could be a phenomenal way, right? So show up, be yourself, and show us the behind the scenes, right? What do you do? What is it? What do you, what kind of tips can you show us and make it easy for us? 
because let's face it, you know, I know that we don't have a lot of things to do now, but if it gets too complicated, we're not gonna do it. 100%. I think that being authentic online is the number one thing because if you're not, they will spot you in a minute. And whatever credibility you built up online, I promise you will take you a hundred times longer to rebuild it. So always show up very authentic. And when I go on a stage and I'm speaking to like 20,000 people, I know for a fact, a quarter of them are going to say that was the worst. What a waste of my time. Another section is going to say, well, it was okay. And there's going to be that section of people, that group of people that walk out and said, oh my gosh, I feel like she was talking to me. This is what I was here for today. And that's okay. Your message is going out to those people who you're attracting. And some of them are going to love you and some of them are not. And that is totally okay. It just means you're not their cup of tea. Or for, have you ever had someone do this, Chella? You're telling them, like you're giving them this great advice. And they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I can't, but I, I don't know. And then they see this book. And the next thing you know, they're telling you, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe what I just read. I think I'm going to try that. And you're like, what? What have I been saying to you for a month? But for some reason, it was like we were speaking a different language to them. And all of a sudden, they saw it in their language, exactly what we've been telling them. And a light bulb goes off. Because by the way, I do this to my husband all the time. He's like, oh, what? I've been telling you that for a year. We should write a book. <laughs> and I'll read it and I'll catch it better. But I mean, that is crazy. Does that happen to you a lot? Absolutely. Because sometimes <laughs> we need to hear it from different people right? So sometimes, listen, for me, you know, somebody wanted me to change phones. I was like, nope, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready. And then when I eventually changed, um, oh my God, I was like, why didn't I change this? <laughs> right? It was, but you have, sometimes we have to hear it. And we are, sometimes we get stuck, right? So I deal with a lot of healers and a lot of mentors that I have. And I remember one of my mentors, you know, I knew I had a little bit of resentment, a little bit of anger towards a person. And he straight out said, are you ready to let that go? And I was like, nope. Right, because I, it's like, nope, not ready. Because we hold on to it. So I've been there, right? But sometimes we just need, and that's why I think if we're doing the same thing, we're going to attract different people. But I just love that example. So when you, Talking about, you know, whether you're in 20,000, 20 people, just concentrate on the people that are resonating with you, right? Because people are not going to like you. People are, you're not going to be their cup of tea. And that's it. It's not personal. You're just on different journeys. And I could not have said that better myself. Concentrate on the people that are ready to pay you to work with, with you. That's it, right? We always concentrate on the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, how many clients do you need? That's it. All right, that's who I talk to. I have a very specific avatar. I see my avatar so clearly that when I go and I have to do any kind of speaking, I speak directly to them. And I know that if I'm invited to an event, that they've invited different avatars, right? But I know it doesn't matter. I don't change who I am. I don't change what, how I speak. I still speak directly to that avatar. So some people walk away feeling like they wasted their time. But the people that I'm speaking to walk away and they're like, oh my gosh, that was incredible. All we need to do is really make a difference. You know, you know, obviously, if we make a difference to one person, and I'm not saying this is, but if you make a difference because we don't know what that person is going to go out and do, right? It's about that ripple effect. But if you're just thinking about if I'm going to here to make a difference on one person and that person goes out and makes a difference in 100 people, Right, indirectly, you have helped 101 people. I love that. I, one of the things I wanna talk about why I have you on here is we talked a little bit about limiting beliefs, especially when it comes to money blocks. And I promise you, if you are not really successful, it isn't because you didn't have the right tools or it wasn't the right time or a million different reasons. Like my kids were too little at the time. It's a block that you have that's holding you back. The only person in this whole world that can hold you back is you. So when I'm talking to people about money blocks, I'll tell you right now, when I was talk that I told that I had a money block, I was like, what are you crazy? I do not have a money block. First of all, I make money. And second of all, if someone said, here's money, I'm taking it. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. And as I worked with this person, there it was. 
clear as day, my money block. And I want to talk about like your money blocks, by the way, come to you when you're very young. Like we're talking what they say five to eight or even younger. And there's things that you hear your parents talk about, your grandparents talk about, you hear on TV, or I'm going to use, for instance, Santa Claus. I asked for a pool. I woke up. I was very disappointed. There was no pool in the backyard. And what my mom said was, don't be ungrateful. Santa brought you a lot of things. So I felt asking for things was being ungrateful. I should just be grateful for what I have. And if she'd have just said, that's not what Santa does. <laughs> There's nowhere to build a pool, you know? And so that's, but I just thought that I was being ungrateful for asking for it. And I was shamed. I felt shame for asking for something that I wanted. Um, all the neighbors had pools. I just wanted a pool. By the way, I don't, those of you on video, there is a pool in my backyard now. So eventually I got it. <laughs> but I'm just saying, what are some of the mind blocks that, that you hear? Like, like for me, it was don't, don't be too educated. Don't make more money than your spouse because it'll make them feel insecure and inferior and your whole relationship will fall apart. My husband has assured me that that will never happen and I can make as much as I want, <laughs> but it still was a block to me. Right? So what are some of the blocks that you hear people coming to you with that they don't even, they're not even aware it's a block and holding them back? Well, the most, the one, the two more popular ones is when you grow up in a household, when they say that you, we can't afford it, you know, I mean, whatever it is, we can't afford to throw a party. We can't afford to go on vacation. It's just the word we can't afford it. So as a child, and you're right, it, it's anywhere between three to eight, you carry that story with you, but you're not even aware that you're carrying that. Right. And that's where the power is. We want to unpack you, you know, just think of a suitcase that you've been carrying, an oversized suitcase. We want to unpack that and look at the things and stories that no longer serve you and turn that oversized suitcase into an overnight backpack, just a very tiny little backpack, right? But the one that, that really has come up recently is when we go to parents and we ask for money and they yell at us. They yell at us because we can't afford it. We yell at us. How can you be it, it, just the yelling part of it, right? And it's really interesting because when you think about that, and this person is self-employed and she's a coach, but when she goes ready to ask for money, there's a block there because in back of her mind, she's waiting. She's going back to when the parents used to yell at her when she asked for money. The minute she was able to turn that and she was able to release that story, right? Because there's an attachment. Everything is attached. I call it connecting the dots. But once you connect the dots and you let go of that story that doesn't serve you, then you can move on. And for her, for actually this happened to be three, three clients recently that did that, right? So sometimes it's about what happened that we don't even remember, and that we're carrying and you know you and i are perfect examples i grew up with you have to work hard for your money and so overcoming that it took a little work it took a couple of sessions you know it, it took a couple of therapy sessions that i needed to go through because you know it's it's about becoming aware and then letting go and releasing i love that and i do think that everybody is carrying a money block of some sort they can't and that bag she's talking about unpacking that stuff you're unpacking isn't even yours so why are you hauling it around right it belongs to someone else so i love that so what are some of the tips that you use when you're working with your coaches or your clients because i would love to see people come to you i would love people because here's what i believe and because i believe it i'm going to tell you it's true there is enough abundance in this world for everyone because some of my clients that come to me are on the other end of the spectrum. They've always had money and they're shameful about having money because people have shamed them in that. Well, you don't understand because you've never had to, you don't get it. And they, they have a, on the other side of it they they feel shame because of their money and money. Like you said, it's just money. It should, it doesn't really make you happy. It doesn't like bring all those emotional things that are attached to it that you think are attached to it. So what are some of the things that you would help your clients with to help remove those blocks? How would that work? Because I would love to see people come to you. Well, yeah, we just, we just sit down, we chat, and then these things show up just like Jenna said. So it's just in an intuitive reading, you know, if you will. So we definitely go a little woo woo, but it's just identifying, you know, I am right now channeling uh, ninth dimension energy healing 
And I, again, I have over 50 certifications, but this is so loving and so caring. It just guides you to that event or that scene, just like the, the clients I mentioned, you know, they remember going back and just the emotions attached to getting yelled at when you ask for money. So we identify that and we are able to release it. Once you release it, once you become aware of it, then you're able to let it go because it doesn't serve you any longer. So it's about identifying or one of my clients who was makes great money. So money blocks does not mean you're not making money. And I think Jenna was a perfect example, right? Because we can make money. So a person is making $500,000, right? But their bank account doesn't reflect that. There's a gap, right? There's something going on. They're going out and they're spending all their money because they're wanting to satisfy something that they felt they were lacking when they were growing up. Right? Five hundred thousand dollars. We should have some money in the bank, you know, right. especially because our expenses are very low. So it, again, money blocks does not mean that you're not making money. It's are you at the point where you want to be? And especially when I do workshops for, you know, my kids that are in private schools. Just because they have money or the parents have money, that doesn't mean that they don't have money blocks. Because it still goes on, right? The shame that nobody's going to identify, they can't understand. So it's just about identifying what that story is and then identify it and releasing it and letting it go. So it usually takes a lot of um, journaling, a lot of writing of letters, forgiveness, compassion, Right? We all just identify it and we let it go. The one thing that every single one of my clients says is that they are lighter after working with me because you're no longer carrying all this baggage. Like Jenna said, that's not even yours. It was gifted to you. Give it back. It's I time to give it back. 100%. We should just pack up those bags into another bag and say, this is yours. I'm tired of carrying it. I'm moving on. <laughs> I love it. I, by the way, what I really love about you is it's not just about removing blocks, about receiving. You are teaching people to have that correct relationship with money. Like, like you said, when I work with people, sometimes they are making a lot of money, but they, they're the ones that never have any because they don't have the right relationship and they think they're going to fill a hole or create like some sort of feeling that they do for a few minutes <laughs> and then it's gone and so is the money. So I love that you really put it into a bigger perspective than most money coaches and you're really creating this incredible um, energy and workspace and relationship with money. Right, because sometimes we shop out of guilt, right? So if you have money, we go out and we shop out of guilt, but it's identifying what that guilt is about so that you're no longer doing that. It's okay if you want to shop, but don't do it out of guilt. Don't do it out of shame. Don't do it because you want to keep up the appearance of something, right? Because it all goes back to what is that thing that you wanted to satisfy? What is that thing that you want to heal that happened to you when you were little? That's it. Let's identify it. Let's release it so that you're full. And so that you're no longer, because when you carry all this emotional baggage, there's, there's not a much room for joy in there because mm -hmm. you're so busy protecting this thing right? Covering it up, whether it's spending the money or doing, making the money, right? So you keep yourself so busy. Let's just unpack it, let it go. So then you're able to have that inner peace, inner joy. When that comes in, even more money will show up. And I like to say abundance better because money is great, right? but I want to get some experiences in the picture right? I want to win a trip to somewhere. I want to be able to do more than just the money. You know what I mean? It's about creating that abundance, the phenomenal people that will show up in your life that are going to show you new things, new experiences. That's what I want for everybody. Well, one of the things I say all the time is your brain is so powerful, your mind. And when you put that blueprint in there, it doesn't have any choice but to follow it. And so if you're putting in the blueprint, like, I would love to do that, but I can't because this is holding me back. It's created a blueprint that it's actually going to follow. So one of the things I love about Chella, she creates this beautiful blueprint for you. And as an expert and a coach, I have coaches and experts, right? To keep me removing mine because I'm not perfect. Far from it. And one of the things I also like to talk about is our parents didn't give us this baggage to be mean to us. That was their idea of perfection. 
that was their idea of keeping us safe. My mom telling me being overly educated or making more money, that was what her idea of a good relationship was. And if I, she wanted me to have that, she didn't understand that I could stand on my own two feet and I could be as smart as I wanted and make as much money. And I would attract that right man and he would be secure with that. She just didn't get that at the point. If people want to work with you, Chella, where can they connect with you? That you can connect with me on Facebook, uh, Transcend Abundance or Chella Diaz. You can connect with me on my website at chelladiaz.com. Facebook is my primary, uh, I would say. Uh, Transcend Abundance is my page, and I, that's where I give a lot of tips. That's where I go and do my lives. Um, but uh, Chella Diaz Facebook will be good. Send me a message. I will definitely, let's, let's sit down. Let's have, a, let's have a talk, right? Because you, you don't know until you find out. You go in and you do a little digging. It's not going to be painful. It is work, but there's no pain. Now is the time. Now is the time to let go of what no longer serves you so that you're able to achieve the, the, the financial goals that you want. I would Good absolutely point. strongly recommend you guys connect with her. She is phenomenal. Have a session with her. By the way, you, you do not get fixed in one session. I don't care how magical the experts are on here, but it took years for you to get to this point, it, it, I'm not saying it takes years to get better, but it's more than a magic wand or a pill or you just spray magic spray on you and the next thing you're this money attracting machine. What I do know is when you do start changing that thought process, one day you sit at your computer and all this stuff starts coming your way. And here was the key when it did for me, it was already there. But those butts in my head were like, oh, that, I don't think I could do that. I don't know that I could do that. And when I opened my mind to it, here I am with the podcast, my magazine's going, and all those were there before. I just didn't see them as opportunities because I had those blocks. So what'll happen is when you connect with her, you start recognizing those, reframing them, letting that baggage go, and putting it in a different perspective and putting that incredible blueprint together with her, magic really starts happening. And you start really having true joy. That's what it's all about, right? It's about letting go what doesn't serve you so that you can have that inner joy because the stuff is around you. It really truly is. But we're so busy because we have 20 plates up in the air that we can't see it. But once you begin to remove or you be unpack this, that's when you begin to see. And I'm so delighted you share that story because I could not have said it better, right? It's there, but we can't see it. And we all, listen, I, I'm currently working with three coaches and this is a family show. So I'm not going to say, but oh my goodness, are they really kicking me right now? I don't mean physically, but you know what I mean? It, because they're, they're having me to step up and they're showing things they're asking me to do that I've been like, yeah, but similar, but no, I'm getting it done and they're making it happen. So, you know, we all need that help. So if you're thinking there, well, I got this, listen, we all need that help, whether it's Jenna or whether it's me, get the help so that you're able to get yourself to the next place. We all, we, are, we all need that little help. I'm not saying we're going to be together for years and years, but we all do need that, that little spark. Just think of a little spark in order to help you get to the next level. She's definitely one of the coaches that I recommend, and I don't personally recommend a lot of people that come on the show because I just don't have that relationship with them. It's not that they're not amazing, but I totally recommend her. I would connect with her. Open yourself up to that abundance coming in your life. Don't wait like I did till you hit 50. <laughs> I wish I'd had all of this years ago, but that wasn't my journey, right? I needed to have all that experience to be where I'm at today, so I'm very grateful for it. But that didn't mean I had to wait that long. It's just what it took to get me here. So I would suggest connecting with her. Your, all the information she gave you will be in the show notes. So connect with her and um, let your world open up to abundance. Thank you so much, Chella, for being with us. You know I absolutely adore you. Oh, this has been so much fun. Connect with us. Connect. We're here to help. Listen, we already did the work. We've already worked with the coaches. We have already come up with it. And listen, if it's not us, if it's not me, reach out. I may be able to connect you with somebody else. I, if I'm not your cup of tea, great. There's so many people out there that can help you. Just get the help. 100%. Definitely. Not only share this podcast with someone else, 
but connect with her. So thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure.